It's the Puff and Steph podcast. Puff and Steph back on the listening device. Hey, friends. Happy Tuesday. We are back with you again. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. What's going on with you? Not much. What's going on with you? Oh, my God. So much you don't even. Well, you know some of it. You don't know all of it. You know some of it. Uh, we'll get to all that in a second. First off, I want to thank everyone for joining us Monday Fun Day. Uh, last night, we appreciate you very much. Hope you guys who won prizes enjoy all of them. Also, local businesses, thank you very much for giving us prizes to give away. And uh, if you are a local business and you're watching this and you want to hook us up with something to hook somebody else up with, get at me. Puff at puffandstuff.com or hit us up on our Facebook page. Tonight, Tuesdays with Olivia is back. We'll be hanging out with Liv as she performs for all of you. Uh, be looking out for that at 7 o'clock on our Facebook page. Now, later in the show, apparently I started some stuff on Facebook yesterday, and I don't even know if you know about it. It was crazy to the point where a random stranger called me over Facebook Messenger to yell at me. Wow. I know. I had no idea. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yes. But before we get to all that, something you do know about, I have a dilemma in my life, and we need to talk it out. This one, this one you do know about. So, out of nowhere, last week, a friend of mine from high school. Now, he was my friend in high school, but we really haven't talked since. You know, when I went home, I didn't see him, and now he's moved away from my small town, and obviously I haven't been there in years. And we just kind of follow each other on Facebook, right? That's what you do now. He messages me out of nowhere and says, hey, I'd be, I'm wondering if you're interested in adopting my dog. So basically what happens is this guy has some medical issues and he feels as though he can't give his dog the best life that the dog deserves. He doesn't see the dog often because of his medical issues. He doesn't take the dog out for walks nearly as much as it should be. And... He, it's a bulldog and he's wondering since, you know, I just lost Ronnie a couple months ago, if I would be interested in taking the dog. There's so many things and you know about this. We've spent, we spent a good amount of time on the phone talking about it a few days ago. Um, it's a, it's an interesting situation that I don't know if I know what the right answer to it is. And at the end of the day, I don't think there is a right answer. It's just whatever I want to do. Right. It's tough. It's a tough situation. So here's the deal. Bulldogs don't normally live that long a life. They're like eight to 10 years. Ronnie was supposed to be 12 to 14 being a mix, but because he got cancer, it was, he only got to nine. Um, but let's just say it's, you know, nothing crazy like that happening. The bulldog is going to live eight to 10, 11 at the most probably and he's already five and I started thinking you know I just went through what I went through with Ronnie and you know do I want to go through that again is you know so soon and I mean that's really the only thing I was thinking of all the other stuff really didn't matter you know vet bills whatever we paid for Ronnie having two dogs whatever we had two dogs for seven years so you know what do we do in that situation it, it was tough you know will he get along with the new dog get around, along with mugatu all that There's stuff a lot of factors. yeah there really is and here's the here's the crazy thing when i call steph to talk to steph about this number one she dropped everything to talk to me about dogs of course she did she's a good person she loves dogs <laughs> but even you were like yeah that's tough now you would think that if i tell steph i have a chance to get a, a dog you'd be like yay get a dog get two get seven like you, th do it. You, you think that's how Steph would be and she wasn't, which leads me to believe, you know, there's more I have to think about than just dog or no dog. Right. There's a lot of factors and the age is a big one for me. I know a lot of people who do purposely, they seek out older dogs. They like to adopt dogs that are middle-aged or older. 
Uh, my old field hockey coach adopts all senior dogs and she's amazing and an angel and it's incredible. And I love that some people do it. For me personally, I just know that it would be really, really hard because you don't get enough time with dogs as it is. Right. So to get them in the middle towards the end of their life, whichever one, it's just really difficult. So that was my first thought. Sure. And it, I mean, it, it's a it's a viable thought. And then I've been doing some thinking over the weekend because we really haven't talked about this much since we talked about it. And at first I was leaning against not taking the dog. And now the more I've thought about it, the more I think I might, there's a good chance I do. And let me explain why. What I went through with Ronnie was awful. Obviously months of chemotherapy, driving him, you know, 45 minutes to the doctor, the time that, um, he almost died because of his internal bleeding because of some of the medication. He, some of the stuff made him so sick. It was tough. Like it was a roller coaster. Obviously when we found out it was the saddest thing, then he started to get better. Then he almost died. Then he started to get better. Then he went to remission. The remission wasn't nearly as long as we hoped. And one day during a random checkup, I was called in to, to the doctor's office and told the cancer was back. And, um, you know, all that was super tough. Um, but then I started thinking like, I can't sit there and dwell on how it ended when I come to make a decision about a dog, because like it or not, if I get this five-year-old bulldog or a puppy or a goldfish, I'm more than likely going to be there at the end of the dog's life. So if it's in five years, 10 years, 15 years, it's going to happen. So if I base all my pet decisions on the end of the pet's life, then I, I should never get another dog again, period. That's the way I looked at it. And when I took a step back and realized that this dog is not having a good life and I can help it have a better life, it it's now making me lean more toward bringing the dog into our house. Yeah. That's why rescuing is so great. Yeah. So I, I was, I, I just started to think like, I can't base every pet decision on the last six months of my dog's life. My, my, you know, my, my passed on dog's life. So like I said, nothing set in stone, but now I'm leaning toward bringing the dog in just because yeah yeah we'll see what happens and and i still want to obviously talk to you about how you feel about all that stuff um but i, I kind of i don't know something clicked in me like it doesn't matter if i get a puppy the puppy's gonna end up passing away one day too you know so why am i ma just because i'm not gonna have 12 years because i might only have three or four or five I don't know. I don't know. It's just kind of where I'm at right now. So well, that's good that you're looking at it differently, like in different ways. I try. I'm trying. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll obviously keep everyone up to date on the situation and what's going on. Uh, into the break, though, let's check this out. A new study out of Spain revealed that more than half of dog-owning drivers say that they drive more carefully when traveling with their pet in the car. Is that you? Absolutely. I wrote, I wrote that on Twitter like two years ago. I was like, I'm such a good driver when my dogs are with me, but if they're <laughs> not, I just, I just don't care as much. <laughs> uh, what, what's really cool too, is having a dog in the car also had the added benefit of reducing driver stress levels. 35% of those surveyed said that they feel calmer when their dogs are in the car. Is that true for you too? You think? Yeah. I'm always in a better mood when my dogs are with me. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. So, Science is right. Yay, science. Uh, coming up in just a couple of minutes, I did something that I thought was innocent on Facebook yesterday, and apparently it wasn't, and a woman is threatening to call the cops on me. Yeah. Tell you about it next. It's the Puff and Steph Podcast. Hey, honey, how are the taxes going? Pretty good. Let's see. We either get $800 back or we owe... Four grand. Hmm. 
I think we should call H&R Block. Let's face it, taxes can be confusing and the laws seem to change every year. Let the professionals at your local H&R Block take the worry out of your tax season. H&R Block in Dillsburg, Newville, Biglerville, Fairfield, and Gettysburg have been owned by the same family for over 50 years. And they've been there for every tax law change along the way. Don't leave money on the table. File your taxes confidently with H&R Block. Everyone is going through something right now, and we're all in this together. That's why CBD American Shaman of PA is looking out for you and your health. During this trying time, CBD American Shaman of PA is focused on safety and the needs of their customers. That's why right now they're offering curbside pickup along with home deliveries. Let American Shaman help you manage these stressful times. To find out how to get high-quality CBD products and a free bottle of Shaman Cleansing Gel without even leaving your car or home, visit HempisHealth.com. Com. Do your kids lose their house keys? Do you hide a key near your front door for friends, relatives, the cleaning lady, or pet sitter? Do you need a better way to secure your home? Let ITD Systems and Security solve all your problems. ITD has the knowledge and experience to install smart home features like smart locks, motion sensors, indoor and outdoor cameras, and wireless keypads that control everything. Plus, you can turn off lights, lock doors, and view any of your cameras right from your cell phone or tablet. Turn your house into a future house and add peace of mind to your life with ITD Systems and Security. To find out more, visit ITDSSI.com. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy. No websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. So yesterday, unintentionally, mind you, I started something on Facebook. So yesterday, Governor Wolf came out and said that every state, everybody in the state who's disobeying the, I don't know if you saw this, who's disobeying the state state's orders could get you know licenses taken away, citations and fines and uh, things like that. Called, called people some names, called people cowards, like stuff I really don't necessarily agree with, but I don't really want to get into politics. I wrote a post, very, very, very tame, on my personal Facebook page. Let me read it to you, okay? And I want you to give me your honest opinion, Steph, okay? I want you to tell me whether or not you think I was trying to start something or not. And by start okay. something, I mean like offend people. Not, right. not a conversation, because I'm always trying to start conversations. But this is what I said. You know it's okay to think that we can begin to reopen safely and still care about the health of other people, right? Like, those two things can be true at once. It has happened before. This either-or garbage is ridiculous. So that's what I wrote. Basically saying, you know, you, you may worry about the economy and people's lives and the health of, of your neighbor. Like, it is okay to, to think of both. You don't have to be either or. That's what I said. And I got a couple people that agree with me, a couple guy that was dropping obnoxious memes. And then this one woman out of nowhere said something along the lines of, think about the Spanish flu. The second go around of the Spanish flu caused more deaths than World War I. I'm not going to fact check her. I'll just take her for her word, say that she's right. When we thought we had the Spanish flu wiped out, it came back with a fury back in like 1918 and so if that's where she ended her argument i've been like oh well let's talk about that what can we do to prevent that happening again right if you don't learn from history you're doomed to repeat it but then i know i think so but then in that same post after mentioning the spanish flu 
She said I was uneducated, that I should stick to talk for, talking for a living, and she called me fat. What? Yeah. See, like, where, like, what does that have to do with anything? No, like, nothing. where does that come from? Nothing. She goes, I'll believe the scientists and doctors stick to radio. And then she's like, obviously, you don't get what, or you don't like what doctors tell you anyway because you don't listen to your nutritionist. <gasps> yeah. She didn't, she called me fat without calling me fat. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. You know, she's just miserable with her own life. And that's, those are the kind of people who say things like that. So I just said, hey, you know, Thank you so much for proving my point. If I don't agree with you, not only am I stupid, but I'm also fat and un, you know uneducated, and I don't deserve or get to have my own opinion unless it falls in line with your opinion. She proved my point for me. Yep, some people are like that. Yeah, and I, and I was just, I was, you know, I said thank you for calling me fat and proving my point. That's all I said, and then a wave of people who just. You know, I want to thank people for coming to my defense. You don't have to, but just boom, 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 boom. Just went like people went in on her crazy, right? Good. Just calling her all sorts of names, saying that she's a terrible person, saying it doesn't matter what you look like. She's ugly on the inside. Uh, you know, people, yes. people were going after her, making fun of her, making fun of the situation, agreeing with me. A couple people kind of agreed with her, but they didn't, obviously they didn't agree with the, the personal attacks. They agreed with her that it's serious. And I never said it, this whole thing wasn't serious. Obviously it's serious. But I all my argument was, I think there's a way that we can open up some businesses safely so that people can get back to work, people can start making money, and also protect the people who are most vulnerable. That's all I was saying. And we're seeing it because Giant's open, Walmart's open, Target's open, pharmacies are open, golf courses are open. You can go places now, right? So why can't, like our friends over at CBD American Shaman of PA, why can't they be open? Right. Right. Why can't Starbucks be open? Yep. You know, thing, things like that. So it's just more asking questions like, what do you think we do next? How do we How do, we do both? She, she was just on my case. And she replied to my statement with like, I need to get my facts straight and things like that. And then, uh, talk to a buddy of mine on the phone. And then like an hour later, I get a Facebook phone call, which is so weird from her. Right. And I look at my phone, I realize it's this woman and I'm like, okay, what do I do here? Do I take the call or do I just let it go out of sheer curiosity I hit accept now at first I thought it was going to be a, like a like a uh, video chat but it, right. it wasn't it was just it was just audio I'm like hello and then she proceeds to scream at me swear at me tell me that I'm ruining her life um, tell me that she's received death threats from people because of the Social media bleep storm that I started. She blamed me for starting it. Told me that she was going to go to the cops and tell them that I was inciting violence against her. Oh my gosh. So he, here's the thing. And here's a tip, everyone. When someone is yelling at you, just talk to them like this. Talk to them calmly. Feel free to laugh at them. It's going to drive them bonkers. Right. It makes them mad. So she was talking to me, not talking, screaming at me. And I'm laughing and I'm like, listen, if you honestly believe that I incited violence against you, screenshot everything you're getting and take it to the police. Please, please, please take it to the police. I would love for a police officer to show up at my door because of this. Because I'm going to record it and put it on my Facebook page. Wow. So she's like, I will. And then she called me a fat bleep. And um, a few more choice words. And then she hung up on me. And then and then, then she deleted her, her post on my post. So it deleted, oh, because I had to go look for it. Yeah, it deleted all of it. It was all of it. 
No, darn it. I missed it. I need to get on Facebook more. Yeah, I should have texted you, honestly. I, I blame myself. I should have texted you and said, hey, check out my page right now. This woman's going right. bonkers. I apologize. I'm sorry. I should have. Did you take screenshots? I did not. I, oh, dang it. I, I wanted to see what people said in defense oh, of you. Oh, people were very nice to me. They weren't very Sorry nice. I wasn't there to defend you. It's you would have had my back. I believe you. I believe you. Because the funny thing about the whole situation is I don't think what I was saying was that controversial. It was more like, hey, guys, take, oh. take some of what you're saying and some of what you're saying and let's put it together. You know? Come on. Let's right. do this. And, it wasn't uh, anything crazy. It, yeah. It, it was just – it was pre- she was she was pretty nuts. I think she's not all there. Um but I'm still, it's been a day and I'm still waiting for cops to show up at my house. I just, you think if I was threatening someone, then that would be a big deal. Right. Where are they? They must be busy. I mean, I know they're busy shutting down barbers who want to cut hair and make money right now. But, you know, I, I just, I feel as though I, 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 I mean, do I, I feel kind of like I'm running from the law in my own house. Yeah. You probably should like change your name and move out of the country. <laughs> Cause you're in trouble. <laughs> That's funny. I have an alias now. Puff wasn't good enough. That is ridiculous. Yeah. I cannot believe she called you through Facebook. Like what makes someone inclined to do that? Do you even know her? Well, no, I've never talked to her. Never met her in my life. The funny thing is my, this is how naive I am. This is how naive I am to some people's craziness. I was like, Hmm. I wonder if she's calling to apologize. I thought, I thought maybe she was calling me to say, hey, you know, I was out of line. I apologize. You really did? Oh, mm-hmm. I thought maybe she, because I mean, I've, I've been mad at people before and obviously I've made personal attacks on people from time to time. I mean, it's few and far between and I don't, I would never go after someone's look, someone's weight, someone's. I don't know anything that might be bad, but I have questioned some people's integrity before. I have questioned some people's morality before. Mm-hmm. Um, not often, and it has it hasn't happened in years. But I've questioned people. I've questioned people's motives before. Um, but if I hurt someone, or I think I hurt someone, I do apologize. I do. If I realize I'm wrong and that I mean, I'm nothing to her and she's nothing to me, but I don't know. Like, I thought maybe she was calling to apologize. Oh, that's so cute of you. <laughs> How optimistic. <laughs> I know. Maybe it's you rubbing off on me. That's the problem. <laughs> You're like, oh, God bless her heart. She's I was not apologize. saying God bless her. I was like this. Hmm. I wonder what this is all about. I wonder if she's calling to apologize. Boop. I was like, oh, okay, this is not an apology. Okay, not an apology. See, the what I want to know is how did that conversation end? Was it like, all right, well, see you later, bye. No, I said, just I said, please contact the police if you feel threatened at all. And she goes, I will, you fat F word. Yeah. What? Yeah. Then I cried. Cro- Karen. Is her name Karen? No, no, but but her name is in the word Karen. That's all I'm gonna say. All right. Um, oh, yeah, coming up, <laughs> coming up in just a couple of minutes. Uh, I don't know if you call this nepotism or not, or whatever. Plus, we have the the age for midlife crisis. It's the Puff and Steph podcast. Hey, honey, how are the taxes going? Pretty good. Let's see. We either get $800 back or we owe four grand. Hmm. I think we should call H&R Block. Let's face it. Taxes can be confusing and the laws seem to change every year. Let the professionals at your local H&R Block take the worry out of your tax season. H&R Block in Dillsburg, Newville, Biglerville, Fairfield, and Gettysburg have been owned by the same family for over 50 years. And they've been there for every tax law change along the way. Don't leave money on the table. File your taxes confidently with H&R Block. 
Everyone is going through something right now, and we're all in this together. That's why CBD American Shaman of PA is looking out for you and your health. During this trying time, CBD American Shaman of PA is focused on safety and the needs of their customers. That's why right now they're offering curbside pickup along with home deliveries. Let American Shaman help you manage these stressful times. To find out how to get high-quality CBD products and a free bottle of Shaman Cleansing Gel without even leaving your car or home, visit HempisHealth.com. Com. Do your kids lose their house keys? Do you hide a key near your front door for friends, relatives, the cleaning lady, or pet sitter? Do you need a better way to secure your home? Let ITD Systems and Security solve all your problems. ITD has the knowledge and experience to install smart home features like smart locks, motion sensors, indoor and outdoor cameras, and wireless keypads that control everything. Plus, you can turn off lights, lock doors, and view any of your cameras right from your cell phone or tablet. Turn your house into a future house and add peace of mind to your life with ITD Systems and Security. To find out more, visit ITDSSI.com. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy, no websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. This is kind of odd, and I don't know if it's going to work out. Uh, Three of the candidates vying to win the Democratic nomination for Utah governor have announced their picks for running mates. One of them, Nikki Ray Pino, announced her father, or excuse me, his father, Nikki Ray Pino Sr. So Nikki Ray Pino Jr. is running for governor, and... His running mate is going to be his father, Nikki Ray Pino Sr. Wow. So, like, he would be his dad's boss. Oh, that's fun, though. What a cute little, like, family team. Is it fun? Or is it like, Dad, let me govern. I'm the governor. Stop (laughs) second-guessing everything I do. God. It's probably a little like that, yeah. (laughs) Like, I know it's going to be one of those things where maybe it's not going to be that obviously animated, but just like, you know, are you sure you're doing the right thing here? Dad, I'm the governor. You're like the lieutenant governor. You want to calm down? All right. All right. I'm your boss. Do you want to get fired? Is that what you want? Is that what you want? Actually, this reminds me of an an episode of Desperate Housewives. Everything comes back to Desperate Housewives. I thought you were going to say Disney Channel something or other. It's like, that reminds me of an episode of (laughs) Zach and Cody. Is that a thing? (gasps) Zach and Cody, yeah. how did you know? I, th- I, I was hoping I was going to get the names right. Yes, you're, you're right. I'm, in, I'm impressed. In Desperate Housewives, Victor is the mayor and eventually wants to become the governor. And his dad is like also a politician, not really sure what his role is. But he's like below Victor, I guess, because he's not the mayor. So it's, it's kind of like this situation. And he does try to tell Victor what to do, even though he's below him. Hmm. Wow. So that's interesting. How did I miss that connection? <laughs> I can't believe you did. But, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so music streaming service Spotify pinpointed the average age of a midlife crisis. It's a lot earlier than we thought. So the staff analyzed data found uh, and found out that uh, at a certain age, you drop your usual playlist and then you, it, uh, your, your new one contains hits from today rather than when like you were a kid if that makes sense so you start listening more to like current pop music than pop music that you listen to like in your 20s or 30s and they think that means you're going through a midlife crisis yeah do you want to hear the age yeah 42 wow 
So at age 42, that's when you hit your midlife crisis, according to Spotify. And to be honest, I mean, if Spotify says it, it's probably true. Oh, absolutely. I think for a lot of people, it happens before 42. Really? Like, and people obviously are dramatic about it and they're exaggerating. But I know people in their 20s and 30s that go through like crazy things and they're like, I think this is my midlife crisis. <laughs> but I, I don't understand why they're basing it off of that. I thought you were going to say they were basing it off of like someone who listened to like, you know, pop. And then all of a sudden they just started listening to sad music. No, it's, it's like they would listen like somebody... Uh... Like somebody who's 42 probably listened to like 90s music, 90s, right. early, early 2000s, maybe even a little bit of 80s here and there. And then one day, boom, they just start listening to like Selena Gomez or or like Lil Pump or something. Jonas Brothers. Sure. Yeah. Oh, I get it because they're like trying to like Remain feel hip. young and hip. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's what you just did with your uh, hip. Yes, hip. <laughs> All right. Time to stump Steph. Roughly half a million people a year are treated in hospital emergency rooms because they injured themselves on this or these. It's broad. Is it like an activity? Like they were jumping rope or something? It, it is kind of like an activity. Well, it's not. It is an activity, but it's. It's it's something. So jumping like they injured themselves on a jump rope, kind of. So it's like an object that hurt them. Yes, but it's broad. Is it like? Is it like trying to hang a TV on the wall? No, it's a good guess though. But no, five hundred thousand people a year injure themselves on. We're gonna say these because this is kind of an all-encompassing answer. This has a lot of things in it. Is it like a piece of cardio equipment, like treadmill, elliptical? I'm just going to give it to you. Yeah. Yes! It's uh, exercise equipment injuries. Yes! Okay. I could totally see that. Oh, yeah. You see people at the gym, like, facing the wrong way on stuff, and yeah. Yeah. You're like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. All right. Next one. If you're married, there's a 76% chance you're doing this less than you should. What is it? If you're married, 76% chance you're doing this less than you should something you're doing for your spouse no just there's something you you should be doing but you're not 76 percent chance you're doing this less is it something you're doing for yourself like or not doing for yourself yeah that's what i meant like yeah, you're yeah. not doing it for your spouse y yes you're, yeah it would be okay. something you do for yourself okay because i didn't know if it was like Taking them on date nights or something nope, like not that. that. Something for yourself. Is it? Does it have to do with like hygiene or health? Um, health more than hygiene. Um, exercising. Wow! Look at you being all good today. All the exercise answers. Yeah, I just <laughs> kind of put them together. Uh, okay, so tonight. At 7 o'clock, Pub and Stuff Facebook page. Tuesdays with Olivia. Going to have a good time. Last week was so much fun. Uh, I think we'll do it again that way uh, for now. We'll give away some free stuff while we're there. Hope to see you guys there tonight, 7 o'clock, Tuesdays with Olivia. Steph, I want you to have uh, a good rest of the day. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you. You too. Hey, hey. Thank you. It's the Puff and Steph Podcast.